Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have an old compact computer. This is a compact Presirio, uh, model number 4160. And this is, well, this was originally a Windows 95 computer, but it's actually uh, somebody installed a uh, Windows 98 uh, software in it. But so I've been working on this. I recently acquired it and I'm trying to get it all working properly. Uh, you can kind of hear it has a loud uh, fan going on there, but that's really not the issue I want to deal with today. Today I want to deal with a three and a half inch floppy drive. So this floppy drive originally just kind of fit into this slot right here. Uh, you just kind of slipped it in right there. You can tell uh, commonly uh, you see floppy drives in these kind of bays here and they have kind of a bezel cover on them. This one does not. It just slipped right in there. Uh, I've taken it out and I've, I've kind of tested this thing out and it sort of works. I could zoom in to the screen right here and it is the A drive that it's plugged into. And if I go ahead and double click this, You can see that it is trying to read it. There's no disc inside right now, but it does light up and you can hear the head moving. But now when I put a, a disc in, now this disc is good. I have another machine that I've tested this on. This works fine. I go ahead and place that in there. I go ahead and retry the disc. You can see it lights up. You can hear the head is trying to read, but eventually it's going to give me an error and it's going to say it can't understand it. Please format the disk. Well, I've tried to reformat the disk. That doesn't work. So there's something wrong with uh, something going on with the drive. And there you go. That's the uh, error message I get. It's asking to, for reformatting. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can fix this problem. Okay, so I did unplug it from the computer. And basically what I'm gonna be doing today is just cleaning the heads and uh, greasing some components. Um, you know, the majority of the time, these things just get aged, they get dirty, so I'm gonna blow it out with some air uh, and just do some lubrication and clean some heads. And normally that will work a lot of the time. Sometimes you have other com uh, issues, like here's the bottom of it, and some of these components can be bad. Sometimes this is a little motor. Sometimes this could be uh, aligned differently and this controls the head motion. Those are things I'm not gonna get into. I haven't really dealt with, but I have cleaned these things out successfully and it's worked in the past. So we'll try it today. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing today is just removing this top clamshell piece. You could also remove a bottom one if it has that. Um, and all of them, you generally can remove this top clamshell. Sometimes it's a little bit different depending on the drive you're dealing with. In this case, there's just a couple of tabs I have to be concerned with. There's one there and there's one there. And there's a little bit of a rotation piece here, so I'm going to kind of lift it up this way. And there's a couple of little, uh, uh, little hooks here that I just have to kind of wiggle it out of. Sometimes there's two tabs that you have to lift up. Sometimes there's a couple of screws on both sides that you need to remove. But in this case, I just need to take a small little screwdriver and lift this up over this little tab and this, this edge is released. Flip it over, do the same on the back side, and then very carefully do this rotation. Again, there's a little bit of hook issue going on here. And so kind of move it back and forth a little bit. And there you go. It is removed. This is the inside of the drive. So in looking at this, um, what you see here is, so um, basically there's a couple of drive motors. There's a drive motor that's under here that actually uh, moves the disc itself. And then there's a drive motor here that this drive motor here actually moves the head, which is right here. And right underneath here is the, the head readers. Um, this, this motor here uh, allows this head to move back and forth. And so if you look underneath a typical three and a half inch floppy disk, you could move back this little plate here. And this little 
little, this little plastic disc in here is basically that holds all the data. And so uh, the, uh, one motor right here allows this to kind of spin. So it connects right here and it spins this whole disc that's underneath here. And then it's just like a record player. There's a bunch of grooves or a bunch of data. And this head here, as it moves back and forth, it essentially reads this little plastic disc. So I'm just listening to it operate. Clearly, it does sound like the disc is spinning. I don't know if this disk drive here is moving back and forth. Now it could be just lack of lubrication here. So there's a little driver. You can see it, there's a little sprocket here. Uh, so as this motor moves, it moves this back and forth and maybe this is not well lubricated and maybe it's sticking as it moves and maybe that's what the issue is. There's also, uh, it actually drives along a little bar here if I could zoom in, you can kind of see a metal bar that, uh, let's see if I could rotate in here, a little bar, it's just basically a little bar that uh, is kind of a guide for this and sometimes that's not lubricated with grease and that could stick. Now again, there's no disc in here right now. I will insert this and you can see what happens. As I insert this disc in here, uh, there's a couple of things that will happen. One, there'll be a little component that helps move this little door open like that to expose the little uh, disc inside. And this little head thing will shut and basically clamp onto this disc. And you can see as I move this forward, the window opens up. You can see the disc window opening up and then the whole thing will just drop down and now it's ready to read. And now one motor will spin this way and then this motor here will move this up and down and read the disc. And when I open it up, it just pops on out. The first thing I'm just gonna do is just take some, uh, some deduster uh, de air and just kinda spray it all out, trying to get as much uh, dust as I can out of here. That may or may not help at all, but couldn't hurt. And I do this first because we're gonna clean the head and when you blow off the dust, uh, dust blows all over the place and will kind of deposit on the head and so you wanna blow out the dust first before you actually clean the head. So next, I'm just gonna take a little tooth pick right here and I'm going to be uh, put, applying a little grease, not tons of grease, but just a little grease to this little drive arm right here for this motor. I'm not sure if that's an issue, but clearly I don't really see a lot of grease on this and so um, uh, it's probably pretty dried up and so it wouldn't hurt. It might be an issue once if I get this thing reading okay. So we'll just apply a little grease right here. Now on the other side, it's kind of hard to get on this little bar right here, but I do want to add a little grease maybe in a couple of spots that I can easily get to. So when it starts moving back and forth, maybe it could be lubri it could lubricate a little bit of this motion for this drive. For the head going back and forth, we'll just lubricate a couple of spots that I can get to and hopefully that'll be enough for that. Next, what we're gonna be doing is cleaning this little head on top and bottom. Uh, you can kinda see right there, there's, there's an upper head and a lower head right there. We're just gonna clean both of those with some isopropyl alcohol. And you could use a Q-tip. Um, I like to wrap it around. I don't really have any fiberless uh, cloth, but I do have this utility ta paper towel which tends to have less uh, fibers than a standard paper towel, so I think I'll just wrap that around a Q-tip like this. Okay, this, I have some isopropyl alcohol little spray here. I'm going to apply that. 
And then you could lift this up just slightly if you want to get underneath there. There's a little bit of a spring. But don't pull too much because the spring could break. And so we're just going to get in there and try to clean off these heads as best we can. And then just with the dry side, I'm going to just try to dry it off a little bit. Okay, so with the heads cleaned, uh, before I close it up, I'm just going to kind of wiggle uh, this, this head a little bit just to make sure that uh, it's not really stuck down and that when this motor activates, it'll be able to move and won't be just kind of stuck in one place. And so I'm just doing this just gently back and forth a little bit, get it kind of make sure that it can move. And then we'll go ahead and with the case, kind of reverse how you took it apart. Let's see, this goes this way. And so I'm just gonna kind of fit it in here. Make sure I can get it there. There's little clips up here and then shut it like that and then it should lift up a little bit here and there you go clipped on both sides and now just plug it back into your computer and hopefully it will uh, function normally Okay, so we went ahead and uh, replugged in the drive, the data cable, the power supply, booted it up. We're gonna stick back in our disk and we're gonna see if it will read it this time. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit the floppy drive. And yes, indeed, it is reading the floppy drive. Here, let's test out another floppy real quick. Make sure it works on another disk. And sure enough, it does. Wonderful. And there you go. Well, I hope this video helped you out. And if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen. And even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.